Hi guys, uh, we're back. Uh, this is the fourth in our series of messages, uh, Christianity 101. Kind of learning about the basics of Christianity, but not from just any teacher. This is the Apostle Paul in his seminal work, the Book of Romans. Uh, my topic today is, is there hope if good people fall short? So in Romans chapter 1, Paul made his case that all people in the world can know that there's God from creation. Look around, how de carefully designed the world is, how beautiful it is, and it makes the best sense to believe that there's an intelligent uh, creator behind that. Uh, th then he goes on and, and shows that uh, there's a lot of reason to believe uh, that there's a God because of the moral code in the world. In chapter 2, he talks about the kind of amazing human phenomenon around the world that all humans tend to judge other people. You know, you see somebody and you say, you know, he's stupid or he's driving too fast or she dresses too sexy or uh, I can't ever trust him. He lies. You, you make judgments on people. And then Paul says, you know, the very fact that you can make judgments like that indicates that you know right from wrong. You know it's wrong to lie to other people. Uh, and so that's his case, that you stand guilty before God. Because if you judge, that shows you know right and wrong, and you really can know that there is a God. Well, then in chapter 2, Romans 17, to chapter 3, verse 8, Paul turns to religious people. And he says religious people are guilty before God, too. Now, religious people, he's talking about the Jews, pretty sure. And uh, so I want you to turn to your neighbor. Uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're doing this on your own. Then just talk to yourself. But maybe you've gathered some friends, classmates. Maybe you've gathered your family. Uh, maybe you're in a, leading a community group. Uh, but turn to somebody in your group and discuss, do you think religious people stand guilty before God? Why or why not? So the reason religious people will stand guilty before God, just like everybody else, is because religious people, and we would probably be, be called religious people today if we're Christ followers, because we don't keep the laws we profess. There's nobody that keeps every uh, standard they profess. Uh, we're all on the D.O. plan, trying to do things to earn God's favor and, uh, you know, I like the image of climbing up a ladder into heaven and God's standard is 100 percent. We all we might some might climb higher than others, do better than others. But we all fall short because God's standard is 100 percent. He's perfect. He can't uh, exist with sin. And none of us can claim to have perfectly uh, pleased God. So that's why all of us will stand guilty before God. Well, the Jews said, you know, we're God's chosen people. We have the sacred scriptures. We've been circumcised. Surely God will give us the nod when it comes to getting into heaven. So Paul writes, this is Romans uh, chapter 2, verse 17. Now you who, if you call yourself a Jew, he's talking to Jews, if you rely on the law and boast in God, they thought they were pretty important people, God's chosen people. If you know His will and approve of what is superior, because you are instructed by the law, they were instructed by the Old Testament Scriptures. If you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of little children, because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, well, that's exactly what they thought of themselves, that they had all of that. And so they had an inside road to God. God was not going to judge them. They were his people. But none of us does good enough. D.O., the D.O. method of getting to God does not work. So some of them uh, reacted to Paul's uh, writing and, and uh, they had some questions for him. So in Romans chapter 3... We read, Paul starts off, or this is one of the questions they're asking him. 
Well, if we're guilty before God, what advantage then is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? And Paul answers, much in every way. First of all, the Jews have been entrusted with the very words of God. He says, that's a great advantage. You have the book. You have God's special revelation. Maybe other people only have what's called general revelation. You can know about God from creation, but you have his specific instructions. That's a great advantage. And then another question some of the people ask is, should I sin more to show God's mercy? Romans chapter 3, verse 5. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust and bringing his wrath on us? I'm using a human argument. You know, people were thinking, well, if my untruthfulness shows God's love and mercy all the better, why don't I just lie away? Uh, and then uh, Paul goes on, verse 7. Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as some slanderously claim, that we say, let us do evil, that good may result. Their condemnation is just. Paul says, please, are you kidding me with that kind of argument? So here's Paul's answer in uh, verse 6. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? He says God couldn't judge anybody if he was approving evil. God doesn't approve evil. He's completely, he's completely holy. Um, so I, those are just a few thoughts from Romans 2 and 3. I hope that helps you. Now why don't you uh, go through your journal or uh, talk to each other further about what I've said. And I hope you have a great time. You know, if you haven't done this, if you're in a group where you don't know each other very well, I would encourage you to you know, kind of share some things to get to know each other. I don't know, I call them icebreakers, uh, so that you can get to know each other better. And then you're going to do better at praying for each other because you're going to feel a little more comfortable with each other. So pray for each other. Um, have a great time. Thanks.